In today's video, we're going to talk about the timeline for applications for a full scholarship. As you might have imagined that the application to get a full scholarship is not going to be that easy. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of students compete for full scholarships in America. There are over 1 million international students who study abroad in America and only less than 1% of them actually get a full scholarship for their education. So it is extremely competitive. And this is a big reason why universities really want to understand the student before they provide any type of funding. And don't get me wrong, for now, there are a lot of universities that go through the application process one year in advance. So if you you are graduating high school in March or April of a certain year and you would like to go to America in August of that year so that's the next semester then you need to start the applications from the previous August so one year in advance and this is only the actual application so there might also be certain preparations which you'll have to do even before that August so before one year you know so there is a lot of things that goes behind the application process and universities are not only looking for academics and SAT scores. They're obviously also looking at how are you using your extracurricular activities. American universities have a very holistic method of analyzing each student application and understanding really everybody's strengths and weaknesses and trying to see how they could fit into the campus of that university. So when you're applying for a full scholarship, it's very important to keep track of all the deadlines for application. And these deadlines are as early as 1st November or 1st December uh, of the year before uh, you are supposed to go to America. So if you wait until you graduate high school in March or April and then start your applications, it's going to be too late. And believe me or not, this is a very big mistake which I made when I was applying to American universities because I took it very light until the last moment and the only option I had was either to wait for one or one and a half years more to do the application for the next year or to just go to a community college for now and then figure out a way to get a scholarship. But this is a mistake that I made so do not make this mistake and learn from my mistake and uh, start your preparations much earlier. And it's not that I never did any research. I did a lot of research but still it was just not enough you know. And a lot of universities which are the top 50 universities in America. These universities also have an earlier deadline because some of these universities, uh, if you get selected for the second round, then they will also provide you an opportunity to do an interview. I remember that when I applied to universities, I got an interview from uh, CUNY Piac University and Princeton University, if I'm not wrong. So with Princeton and CUNY Piac, I had an interview and I don't remember anything about it because it was more than five years ago. At least Princeton, I remember that Princeton was a alumni of Princeton who was conducting that interview. So it was not someone from the admissions office. It was basically someone who had graduated from Princeton and had volunteered their time to look at and probably interview a few uh, incoming people who have sent their applications to Princeton. So I also remember that in the interview process, he was typing something, you know, like in the back I could hear the keyboard. So obviously they're taking notes and these notes will be sent to the admissions office later on. But anyway, coming back to the timeline now, you need to start your preparations for SAT and TOEFL and everything before, let's say in April or May of the year before that you're supposed to go to America. These, uh, most of these exams like TOEFL and IELTS, which are the English proficiency exams are valid for two years. So you can take them even in your 11th standard and you should be more than fine. Like you can always use them later. Do not delay these exams. When it comes to the SAT, prep well. A lot of students take the SAT twice, so according to that you need to figure out your timeline whether you want to take it once or twice and every time that I've seen a student their scores are improved the second time by 100 or 200 points extra. So you should also strategize that if you would like to take the SAT once in your 11th and the second time again in your 12th. Now when it comes to uh, the actual application, the applications for most American universities will start on 1st August before the August that you are supposed to go there obviously, this is the year before. Now on 1st August I feel like in the, at least in the first first week that the applications are open, you should at least start your application to see what it looks like, right? The timeline for that would be to August to September. You can continue working on the actual application, do some research, you know, put on universities, write the essays. You will also need to get a lot of recommendation letters. 
So from September is kind of the time where you will have to get all the recommendation letters from your high school teachers, at least two to three of them. Now, the thing there is that submitting a recommendation letter is actually not that easy. Okay. It actually involves a little bit of a process. So if you know Common App, most of you might know Common App. That is the app where you're going to be submitting your application to most of the American universities. Now on this app, you will have to invite your teacher to be able to submit your recommendation letter. Then the invitation goes on the teacher's email and then the teacher needs to create an account to be able to send a uh, recommendation letter for you. So it's a little bit of a process and it's definitely not as easy as just uploading a PDF. And a lot of times teachers are not that tech savvy. So they also take a little bit to understand what's going on and create an account. So you should definitely consider that in your timeline. Do not delay it uh, by a lot. Talking about the essay and the extracurricular activities, these two things are very important. And believe me or not, there will not be one essay, okay? There will be multiple essays that you will need to write, at least 10 to 15 if you're applying to uh, a normal 10 to 12 universities. So all universities will also have their own specific essays that they will require. So make sure that you're allotting enough time, not only write the essay, but obviously get it reviewed by three to four people, get their comments on them and then edit those essays. So all of that takes a lot of time. So your August, September, and then towards October is also when the scholarship applications and financial aid applications are open. Uh, some of the universities will require you to fill out a financial aid application. So October is kind of the time when you also need to start working on all of that. And then as soon as November comes, first November will be the early application deadline, whether it be early decision or early action. I'm going to make another video very soon about the difference between early action and early decision. It is very important to know which early application are you using for which university. Some universities, it's better to apply early, while others, it's better to apply on a regular decision timeline for international students. So all of this goes into a lot of research which needs to be done beforehand and not on the spot. Most students make this mistake of just taking whatever universities that they see on the common app and adding them and submitting an application. But that is not actually the smartest way to go about it. All of this takes a lot of research. Coming back to the timeline, as October kicks in, obviously you'll, doing, you'll be doing the financial aid applications. I would highly recommend that if you're applying early anywhere, then by 20th or 25th October, you should submit your early decisions, early actions and early decision so that you're not really leaning towards exactly on the first November deadline. Common App is known not to work properly on the day of the deadline whether it be in November or in January. So make sure that you submit your applications much before so that you're not submitting them at the last moment when everyone else is also trying to submit their applications. And then uh, let's say in October you submit the applications and then in November through December, you will also be working on your regular decision timeline. So regular decision applications need to be done uh, around that time and submitted by the end of December. Now, if you're applying to separate scholarships, which need separate applications, then this will be done on a case by case basis of each university. Each university might have a separate application or something which they could require you to fill out. And this will be under the specific department's website or something and they will have their own applications. So this is something that I cannot cover in this video because all the universities might have it differently, but it should not be later than 1st January. I mean, most scholarships that I know about are always before 1st of January. So be prepared to have everything done by January. Now from January, after January will be kind of the regular decision timeline deadline. After that regular decision deadline, you will kind of be free, you know, until March or April, until you start hearing back from those universities. So in March or April is when you'll start hearing back from the universities for their decisions and their scholarship decisions. And then after that, on I think before 1st of May, for most of the universities, you will have to decide which university you would like to go to and you will need to pay a deposit and a deposit is very important because this is the deposit that will finalize your admission to a certain university i've also seen some students who pay deposits at a number of different universities but then they end up going to only one of those universities uh, it's a common practice i do not recommend doing it because you will just be wasting your money because you do not get this deposit money back it's a non-refundable deposit 
And once you have that, you will be able to just get your visa documents from that university and apply for a visa. Application for visa, especially in India, takes a long time. It takes as long as two to three months to be able to get a visa appointment. And that could be very stressful. So you want to make sure that by 1st of May or 15th of May, whatever the deadline is, you have already decided which university you would like to go to. So in the next one or two months, the university can, can quickly give you all the visa documents that are necessary. And after this, the university will not do much because they will give you all the visa documents necessary. And then you will be responsible for applying for the visa and preparing for the interview. And after that, you go for the interview in, let's say, June or July. You know, uh, if you can get it in May, then you would be extremely lucky. But usually I've seen students go in June or July. And then in August, you uh, most students will go to America in August. So you can start preparing for your departure to America in August. All right. Um, I hope that this video really helped. I know that uh, there is a lot of different moving pieces that go into the timeline. But it is extremely important that you remember to start at least one year in advance, if not one and a half years in advance. But by August or September of the year before that you plan to go to America, if you start by then, then I feel like you're in a very good spot because you will be able to cover a lot of the scholarships, a lot of the research, you have enough time. And this is all considering that you spend enough time behind applications and prioritize it and probably spend let's say five hours every week at least on these applications so make sure that you also make it a priority to finish all of these applications during this time because after december or january once you're done with all of your applications you can get back to focusing on your classes and your exams and everything else but until this period from august up to december it is extremely important that you prioritize the application process much more than a lot of the other tasks that you might be doing because this is your time to capitalize on everything that you have done in the past and all the achievements that you have from the past and be able to use that in a strategic manner to apply to universities and improve your chances of going to and getting a scholarship at such a university. If you're interested in studying abroad and if you feel like you are a high achieving student with good academic grade and extracurricular activities, then log on to my website www.nandjavia.com and get on a Zoom session. I organize regular Zoom sessions where I share my experience of studying abroad and also my program where I select a few high achieving students every year and help them throughout the process of getting a full scholarship in America. So I highly encourage you to check out my website and sign up for the closest Zoom session. There will be a lot of information regarding studying abroad and also information for your parents to know what to expect and what not to expect if you end up working with me. We have a very high acceptance rate and a very high rate of students getting full scholarships at at least one university out of all the universities that they apply to. And that's the first step towards your American dream that you would like to um, achieve. So looking forward to speaking with you and I hope this video really helped you and uh, leave your comments down below. What questions do you have about studying abroad or scholarships? And I will try to make a video on it as soon as possible.